Hello and welcome to Consulting Ninja. If you are new to my channel, please like and subscribe. If you find this content helpful, hit that notification bell and don't forget to check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, I am excited to talk to you about the release of Svelte 4. I'll also provide an overview of the migration guide from 3 to 4, so let's get right to it. Svelte 4 has been in the works for months and it brings with it various improvements to performance, developer experience, and the overall Svelte ecosystem. While it's considered a maintenance release, it sets the stage for the highly anticipated Svelte 5, which will introduce major new features and performance enhancements. This is crazy to me because one of the highlights of Svelte 4 is in fact its improved performance. The release includes optimizations that result in both smaller and faster hydration code, leading to reduced bundle sizes. For instance, on kit.svelte.dev, the JavaScript generated across the entire site was reduced by 12.7%. Additionally, the Svelte package size has been significantly reduced, nearly 75% smaller, resulting in faster installation times and improved loading speed, particularly for users with limited connectivity. This is interesting to me because this also matches very closely the reduction of dependencies in Svelte, which has been greatly reduced from 61 down to 16. This is also a roughly 75% reduction. The reduced bundle size is likely directly related to the reduction in dependencies. Keep that in mind when you are developing your own apps. I also want to point out here that this means increased security because with less dependencies, there are less opportunities for malicious code injection. To enhance the developer experience, Svelte 4 introduces several improvements. Transitions now default to being local, preventing confusion around page navigations. For web component enthusiasts, there is an overhaul in the way Svelte is used to author custom elements, eliminating bugs and inconsistencies. Furthermore, the IDE authoring experience has been enhanced with features like improved navigation, cleaner autocomplete suggestions, and my favorite, more reliable auto imports, which I certainly appreciate because I've been getting annoyed with the auto imports putting the wrong path. The official Svelte website, svelte.dev, has also undergone a makeover, offering a more user-friendly experience. The site has been split into multiple pages with improved mobile navigation, dark mode, and enhanced REPL, and revamped TypeScript documentation. The tutorial links have been updated to point to the new learn.svelte.dev experience that provides an interactive learning journey for newcomers. So if you want to practice, I will put the link in this video's description. First and foremost, you need to ensure that you meet the minimum version requirements. So for Node.js, you'll have to make sure that you have Node.js 16 or higher. If you're using SvelteKit, make sure to upgrade to version 1.20.4 or newer. If you are using bundlers like Vite, Webpack, or Rollup, update the corresponding plugins to the specified versions. For TypeScript users, upgrade to TypeScript 5 or higher. If you meet those requirements, then you're good to go. Bundlers now require specifying the browser condition when building a front-end bundle. SvelteKit and Vite will handle this automatically, so stick with SvelteKit. But for Rollup and Webpack, you may need to adjust your configuration to match the Rollup plugin Svelte and Svelte-Loader documentation. A notable change in Svelte 4 is the removal of support for the common JS format for compiler output. The Svelte slash register hook and the CJS runtime version are also removed. If you need to use CJS output, you can still accomplish this by using a bundler to convert Svelte's ESM output to CJS in a post build step. Several stricter type definitions have been introduced for Svelte functions, such as create event dispatcher, action, action return, and on mount. If you are using any of those, make sure to update your code accordingly to avoid any type errors. For those who create custom elements with Svelte, the process has been overhauled. The tag option is now deprecated in favor of the new custom element option, providing more configurability. 
the migration script will automatically adjust your code to reflect that change. In terms of component typing, Svelte component typed is deprecated and you should replace it with Svelte component, which now has all the typing capabilities. If you encounter type errors, modify the affected code by changing type of Svelte component to type of Svelte component any. There are also changes related to transitions, default slot bindings, preprocessors, and other breaking changes that you can find detailed in the migration guide documentation. To make your migration process easier, an official migration script has been provided. You can use the following command to automatically migrate some of the changes, npx svelte-migrate at latest space svelte-4. As library authors, it's crucial to consider whether you'll only support Svelte 4 or if it's possible to continue supporting Svelte 3 as well. Most of the breaking changes in Svelte 4 don't affect many people, so supporting both versions might be feasible. Remember to update the version range in your peer dependencies accordingly. Overall, Svelte 4 brings exciting improvements in performance, developer experience, and ecosystem enhancements. Upgrading from Svelte 3 to Svelte 4 involves following the migration guide, ensuring minimum version requirements, and adjusting your code where necessary. Again, the official migration script can assist you with automating a lot of these changes. Happy coding with Svelte 4 for now. Thank you for joining me today. Take care, and as always, have a great day.